top 10 reasons Vanderpump Rules should be canceled. Number 10, the main character. In seasons gone by, this type of an exchange would have seemed unthinkable. But now, after Scandoval has got everyone from J-Lo to the White House Correspondents' Dinner talking, it feels representative of the fact that the dynamics on Vanderpump Rules have changed. Vanderpump founded the show and her name is in the title, but she's no longer its main character or the reason why fans tune in. Looking back to the beginning of Vanderpump Rules way back in 2013 when his cast lived in dingy rented apartments and waited tables, the vibe was very different. As the breakout star, Vanderpump was the show's main draw. The first season premiere of Vanderpump Rules followed an episode of RHOBH with no ad break and initially the show capitalized on its audience's desire to see more of Vanderpump. Shauna Shea was originally cast Cast on the show because she was the former mistress of actor Eddie Sebrian, the former husband of Vanderpump's RHOBH co-star Brandy Glanville, so there was an intentional crossover between the two shows. In the early seasons, Vanderpump would stroll around her small feet of medium tier West Hollywood restaurants looking fabulous and acting like she was CEO of an international conglomerate. The younger cast were new to reality TV, so as a more seasoned reality star and executive producer, LVP would insert herself into their lives to guide the drama along. In her role as the boss, she'd host team meetings at SUR, which functioned as showdowns between the dueling staff. Number nine, power dynamic. Part of what worked about the early seasons of Vanderpump Rules was the unequal power dynamic between Lisa and her staff. She was not only their boss at SUR, but she was responsible for handing them a golden opportunity opportunity to be reality TV famous. By contrast, Vanderpump struggled with not being in charge on RHOBH where she was frequently accused of staging storylines or manipulating her co-stars. Her exit in season 9 came after the cast accused her of leaking stories and eventually tired of her acting like the show's unofficial executive producer. On Vanderpump Rules, these Machiavellian qualities worked in Vanderpump's favor. Here, she actually was the executive producer and she didn't have to act like the staff at SUR were her equals or hide the fact that she was blatantly stirring the pot to create drama. The show was geared around portraying her in a positive light and most of the cast knew that their role was to misbehave a little bit, but not too much. If they did, it wouldn't end well for them. In the early seasons, being fired from SUR often meant leaving the show with one notable exception. As Vanderpump Rules became more popular and the cast took advantage of opportunities beyond SUR, the power disparity lessened. Most of the cast stopped being on the payroll at Vanderpump's restaurants and without her businesses as the central backdrop, her role in the show became unclear and muddled. There was a scene from season 9 where ratings were low and COVID precautions were still inhibiting filming with the cast attending an endless cycle of themed parties because they couldn't go on trips or go to bars. In this episode, Vanderpump was, for reasons which are still a mystery, attending a nose job consultation with a pre-scandoval Raquel Levis, who she barely knows. This is one of many scenes where people watched and were like, what is going on here? When Vanderpump Rules returned for this season, expectations were sky high even before Scandoval broke in March 2023. Levis was rumored to have hooked up with Tom Schwartz, who was only recently divorced from their co-star Katie Maloney. Fans were also keen to learn more about the accusations of misconduct against Lala Kent's ex-boyfriend, film producer Randall Emmett, which were reported by the LA Times. Number 8, as we've already said, Vanderpump isn't needed. Either production or Vanderpump herself have seemed to realize that it's not realistic to have her constantly hanging out with a bunch of people half her age, most of whom no longer work for her. Her screen time on this show has been reduced and we've seen her deployed much more strategically as a shoulder to cry on or a business mentor. At one point she even had her husband Ken wander into her kitchen to reveal a major pre-Scandoval bombshell about Scandoval and Levis spending the night together. Obviously staged moment was vintage Lisa Vanderpump. It feels like Vanderpump has flourished this season in a reduced role now that she is no longer showing up where she's not needed. We can see the best of her like her tearful speech at SUR and what would have been the season finale or when she consoled Maddox after she learned about her boyfriend's betrayal. Pre-Scandoval, she was one of the first cast members to realize that something was up and she got straight on FaceTime with Scandoval to probe him. Once again, proving herself as a GOAT reality star. 
On social media, fans questioned why Lisa, who not uncoincidentally opened a successful West Hollywood bar with Scandoval and their co-star Tom Schwartz, was sticking up so much for him. The backlash was so loud that Vanderpump was accused of having vested interests. And on Twitter, she was forced to defend her own defense of him. Perhaps Vanderpump was merely trying to portray herself as the voice of reason. After all, for purposes of balance, she came down much harder on Scandoval and Levis in the final episode, but her behavior across the reunion, like taking it upon herself to trapeze into Scandoval's dressing room to coach him to be more emotional, suggests she might not be thrilled about her reduced role on the show. From an ego standpoint, it's easy to see why. She created it and her name is on it. She's still the center of cast pictures and the opening credits. Why shouldn't she be in the thick of it all? Vanderpump came to blows with another huge ego, former cast member Jax Taylor. At one point he said, this is my show. Unimpressed, she reminded him, this is my show. He's no longer on it even if he told Rolling Stone he would consider an offer to return. But I'm not sure it's Lisa Vanderpump's show either. Vanderpump Rules is a joint endeavor where no one person is more powerful than the combined cast. For that, We'll have to wait for her upcoming Hulu series, Vanderpump Villa. As a creator of the show, but also as a star and producer who has guided its young stars, Vanderpump's contribution can't be understated. But is she the reason people are still tuning in? Of course not. Number seven, thriving without Lisa. After season nine, there were rumors that Vanderpump Rules was facing the ax before divorces and hookups reignited fan enthusiasm for another reason. Now, the aftermath is clear that is the younger cast and the real drama in the lives that are the driving force behind the show, not as creator. Number six, the iconic franchise. A press release from the network read, Bravo is home to five of the top 10 unscripted reality shows across cable, and Bravo programming on Peacock is breaking records with the first three months of 2023, ranking as its most watched on the streamer. It's not surprising that we'll be seeing more Vanderpump Rules down the line. The dramatic ordeal between Ariana Maddox, Tom Sandoval, and Raquel Levis has given the longtime franchise new life. Number five, keeping the show around. The reason fans believe things are coming to an end is because TMZ recently dropped word that Pump Restaurant, Lisa Vanderpump's longtime lounge and restaurant in West Hollywood, is set to close in July 2023. While the shuttering definitely comes as a bit of a surprise, considering the restauranter is opening two additional spots and seems to have the hospitality industry on lock, it's not a direct reflection on the show. Number four, falling off. The one rich franchise which brought us so many brilliant moments has fallen to such depths and for it to have happened so suddenly. If you haven't been following the season or what has made this crown jewel now borderline unwatchable, Variety's Kate Arthur also wrote a good rundown. Seems like a waste of a good franchise and some of the greatest reality television personalities on this side of Calabasas. Number three, new show for OG cast? Question mark. First of all, the old cast needs its own show. The original promise of Vanderpump Rules was that it followed the lives of people who worked in Lisa's restaurant. As anyone who has worked in food service in the before times can tell you, it's always a hotbed of partying and complex interpersonal relationships. So Vanderpump was a lot like Real Housewives, but everyone was younger, hotter, and screwing each other. Eight years in though, it's not that show anymore. All the main characters are coupled up and settling down in the valley. They have IRAs and mortgages, so they shouldn't be getting sloppy at Hollywood dive bars on a weeknight. Right? Number two, cast dynamics. What made the original pump rule so intoxicating is that the relationship dynamics between the cast were deep and organic. You can't get that by casting a bunch of reality show hopefuls, putting them in the same work environment, and turning the cameras on. That's what made Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club the unwatchable bore that it was. And as hard as it may be, casting directors needed to find a young cast of people who actually are friends and hang out together. This might take time, and it might mean putting Vanderpump Rules' original recipe on an extended hiatus. And number one, ending the iconic series. Whatever new form the show takes, Lisa needs to keep her paws out of it. The cast of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills turned against her because of all her behind the scenes machinations and she eventually left the show before copying to them. Now that she has turned her attention to the show full time, her interference is obvious. On Vanderpump Rules where she serves as an executive producer as well as a cast member, she doesn't put just her finger on the scale. She puts her whole body, a jeweled necktie, three of her dogs in costumes, and a luxury handbag on it. Viewers are savvy enough to differentiate between a bit of application for drama's sake and scenarios that are completely constructed. It's the difference between putting some MSG on your food and serving it as the main course. That is all for today. Let me know what you think of this show. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more news on your favorite celebrities. And I'll catch you next time on The Rich Life.